everyone and welcome to the Dassault System Gardens near Paris. I'm Whaley and today we're here with Frédéric Vaché, the founder of the 3D Experience Lab. Hi Fred. Hi Whaley, how are you? I'm good, thanks. Today we'll be visiting the 3D Experience Lab, learning a little bit more about its purpose and what it does. But before we get there, tell us a little bit more about how it started. Actually, it started six years ago. Okay. The 3D Experience Lab is the uh, Open Innovation Lab of Dassault Systems with uh, the objective of accelerating and supporting disruptive startups and projects that strongly impact the society. So in that purpose, we are monitoring the 17 SDGs, you know, the 17 uh, Sustainable Development Goals from the United Nations, wow. in order to identify and source innovative projects that strongly impact. Wow, that sounds incredible. I heard we're also going to meet one of the startups accelerated by the lab. Is that true? That's true. A few of them are here in our campus, so let's get there and meet them. Let's go. So this is it. This is the 3D Experience Lab. You're inside. <laughs> How exciting. Um, can you tell us about the different aspects of the lab? So we accelerate two types of projects. Uh, we have a startup accelerator so that we help them to scale up and to success. And uh, we accelerate communities, communities of passionate people who are working together to achieve a common goal. How would you define the 3D Experience Lab? It's uh, a global uh, impact lab, uh, as I mentioned, and uh, we want to really take project early stage. So you know those uh, two or uh, three guys in their garage and help them to uh, scale up, to internationalize, to connect with uh, other partners on the industry. You know, at the system, we know all the industries uh, at a very high level. So it's very easy for us to open doors and to connect people. We connect small startups with big industrials on this on a worldwide standpoint. So really what we want to do is uh, not to bring uh, ideas on PowerPoints, is to uh, deliver on value and it's to really bring our uh, projects to life. And I know there's an aspect that has to do with a fab lab. True. Uh, in the free expense lab, you have four main uh, quadrants. Okay. You have the immersive lab, mm -hmm. you have the data on ID lab, mm -hmm. you have the uh, virtual twin lab and you have the fab lab. So the Fab Lab is a, a, an important piece of it because we, it's where we prototype things, it's where people meet and learn. By the way, it's a word invented by uh, Dr. Neil Gershenfeld from the MIT, and we are working with, uh, with him in close collaboration with all these uh, network of Fab Labs around the world. So they're actually creating things in the Fab Lab. Exactly. You make things, but before making things, what you need to do is you need to design things and engineer things. So it's where the whole system is uh, coming in the loop you need to, to design and obviously uh, we launched, by the way, uh, new apps that are uh, fully online on the, on the browser so for makers to uh, very uh, easily access to those apps in order to express their creativity. Are there multiple 3D experience labs? Yes, we have one in Paris here in the headquarter, the original, one in Boston in the uh, North America campus, okay. one in India and breaking news, we are uh, opening a new one in Munich. Oh wow! Exactly, and the uh, next uh, stage will be uh, Shanghai to cover the Asia Pacific. With the lab, we want them to be hubs. These labs are platforms to uh, federate the local ecosystems, to connect with our employees, because uh, at the lab, we are not one team. We are all Dassault systems. Everyone could bring 10% of his time on the daily activities to provide his skills uh, as a mentor of the lab. And how many projects are you guys actually working on now? Currently, we are having about 50 projects under acceleration, and it's about 10 new projects per year. We want to focus on very promising projects, and really what we want to do is uh, to go to the success to these projects. Mm -hmm. So we talked about virtual reality a little bit in the beginning. Um, any chance we can try it? Definitely. So we've built the virtual world of innovation, an immersive uh, experience so that you can experience all the projects around their virtual twin. So let's teleport ourselves in the virtual world. Let's go. Let's go. Yeah, where are we? We are in a, in a virtual world of innovation uh, designed by the, the 3D Expanse Lab team, whereby, like in a trade show, you can uh, walk around and have a look, visit the different uh, themes. Are all of these stands different? Projects? Each stands are featuring a, a project, whatever, a, a startup project or a community project. Accelerated by the lab. Exactly. Wow, All those that's projects a lot of stands. Are accelerated by the lab. Let's discover this one, which is coming from a, a French startup, Damae Medical. They are developing a new device over there that helps 
dermatologist to detect potential skin cancer. That uh, the dermatologist is uh, applying on the skin of a patient. And uh, there is a kind of free scanning up to the derm in order to uh, provide uh, imagery that is uh, analyzed with uh, artificial intelligence and uh, with a pattern detection, it can potentially help to detect a skin cancer or melanoma. Without any biopsy, no cutting, just a Just uh, in applying office. this uh, device wow. on, on the skin of the patient. What's this? This one is uh, coming from Norway, as okay. you can see there. And they are developing an autonomous robot, maritime robot, to take back all the rubbish and all the waste from the arbors. So, uh, by itself? By itself. Wow. So he's uh, having two uh, bins, front and rear. Okay. And he's uh, monitoring potential uh, waste uh -huh. and bring them back into pods that are uh, constructed on the arbor. And how is the lab working with this startup? So as you see with the uh, virtual twin, uh -huh. we are helping them to, to design and engineer this, uh, this machine. Uh, and most importantly, to industrialize this, uh, this machine. Okay. Also, we are helping them to connect with other industrials, potentially to, uh, to come to a, a trade show to present their uh, innovation, potentially to uh, a cross-border, so set up in another country. We just uh, announced recently a new one called Hopper, a French startup willing to reconcile uh, circular economy and handicap. Wow. So maybe you don't know, but in the aerospace industry, there are a lot of uh, composite materials. They are uh, recycling composite materials in order to create blades, as you can see here, uh, for handicapped person, for them to run again. And the composite blades is done from different uh, layers, composite layers that are assembled. And uh, it's pretty expensive. Uh, so recycling from uh, the aeronautics is making the uh, blade very affordable. I have a surprise for you. What is it? The Hooper team is here. So let's go back in the real life and meet Victor. Sounds great. Sounds Thank good. you so much for showing us around. Thank you. We're back in the real world with Charlotte from the 3D Experience Lab and Victor, the general manager of the startup Hopper. Hi, everyone. Hi, Wayne. Hi. How are you doing? Great, excellent. Let's jump right in. Victor, um, I know that the Hopper just recently joined the 3D Experience Lab. Could you tell us a little bit more about this innovative prosthetic? So uh, Hopper is a French startup that aims to make sport uh, more accessible to leg amputee people, um, thanks to the upcycling of uh, carbon material from the aeronautical industry. Amputee people in their daily life uh, use a, a, a prosthetic foot that they can use uh, to make uh, real activities at their home, but especially when they want to run, they have to get a carbon blade. But the, the, the problematic is that uh, today the, the carbon blades are very expensive and difficult to use for uh, amputee beginners. So we, we chose to, to design a, a carbon blade that will be more accessible and more versatile and more easy to use than uh, the, the current blade. Could you develop? How is it easier to use? It's easier to use because it's more soft to use uh, for, for, for beginners and uh, we aim to reduce the cost by using the carbon waste from the aeronautical industry to make it uh, half as much uh, as the, the current prices uh, on, the, on the market. So um, it will be uh, more accessible for everyone and uh, our uh, main goal is to enlarge the, the public that uh, currently practice sport among the amputee community uh, with a more accessible uh, product. And this product is also more versatile thanks to uh, a, a sole change system and the, this blade is also very uh, useful for difficult grounds such as in the mountains for example and with one blade and one sole we can run on roads, on the difficult grounds such as mountains, on the track, uh, running track, and uh, this blade will offer uh, new opportunities because the current blades are developed for uh, running for athletes on 
uh, on, uh, on tracks for, for competition. You're really making it more accessible for the general public. So could you tell us a little bit more about how you're working with the lab? The lab uh, enables us to design uh, our blade. It's uh, a, a carbon part that uh, looks simple, but is very difficult uh, in internal structure. So we have to, to design the, the shape and then to, to make some uh, structural scenario to create a safe product and to predict how it will react uh, when it will be used by uh, amputee people for sports on different grounds. We have to, 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 to use 3D uh, tools to, uh, to predict that. Um, Charlotte, could you tell us a little bit, little bit about the other startups that work with the lab? We have uh, today around 50 startups accelerated at the lab. It's a two years plus three years program. So overall it's a five years program. So they stay with us uh, for quite a long time. As the lab has been created six years ago, our first startups are actually leaving us and flying by, flying alone. Leaving but the nest. But some new one coming, we have some new babies coming in the nest. <laughs> so, so very happy. Um, yeah, 50 startups that we classify around three themes. First one is city uh, for, for example, new buildings, smart facade, uh, new mobilities, smart mobilities, uh, life for everything in med tech, health tech, medical devices, prosthetic, and lifestyle for uh, consumer good and packet good. So inspiring. It must be great to come to work every day and know you're changing the world. We are very world. lucky. Yeah. We are. <laughs> Um, so I know that you're always looking for the next disruptive product, innovative startup. Yeah. How can people join the lab? So first they have to meet our criteria, which are quite strict. Uh, the number of places is quite limited. Uh, we accept 10 to 12 new startups maximum every year. Yeah, we are a big company, but uh, we are very selective. So first, the project has to be disruptive. Second, early stage, and uh, we are very, very um, strict on the early stage, but it's for their own good because the system software, the suit of software, I mean, allow you to start with the sketch, then to go to the design simulation, and then to end up with the manufacturing. So if the startup joins quite early, it can really benefit from the whole suite of software that we actually provide. Then to have a positive impact on society, uh, for that the startup has to answer at least one of the UN SDG, United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. Okay. There are 17 of them and the startup has to answer at least one. And then our last criteria is to leverage collective intelligence, but actually meaning the startup has to be in need of the 3D experience platform and the system solution, as this is part of what we provide to them when they are accelerated. I'd argue everyone needs it. <laughs> I hope so, I guess. I think so. Um, okay, so Fred mentioned earlier today that you guys don't just work with startups, you also work with makers, yeah. entrepreneurs, and artists in residence as well. Uh, starting last year, we have one, our first artist, which is Kate Reed, which is based in uh, Walsam, mm -hmm. in our campus next to Boston, but we now have one in France, and her name is Nino, and I think she's here today, so I hope you get to meet her. She is, and I can't wait to see what she's working uh, on. It's an amazing project, you'll like it. But first, I just wanna say thank you so much no, for you. taking the time thank to the, introduce us to Hopper and the rest of what the lab does. Thanks for coming at the lab. <laughs> Thanks for having us. Hi, Nino. Hi, Wendy. How are you today? I'm great, and you? I'm pretty good. Can you tell me a little bit about your work? So, I'm a computer engineer and a multimedia artist. Currently, I, I work at 3D Experience Lab on a brain-computer interface, which is a mask that uh, displays the emotion of the wearer with uh, optic fibers and different colors. This mask contains a brain sensor that will uh, allow to scan the brain of the person. There are like two electrodes here that mm -hmm. can really capture your uh, brain signal. And they can tell your emotions. Yes, it's it's um, like I'm able to to know a range of emotional state like uh, relaxation, excitation, um, like valence and arousal. What happens? What what happens once it knows your emotions? So each emotional state is mapped with a, a color in the optic fibers, and there are also animation. Uh, for example, if you reach a peak of excitation or a peak of relaxation, there will be an animation like blink or uh, wavy uh, when you are relaxed and meditative. Oh, it must be really beautiful.
Um, so can you tell me a little bit about how the lab has supported you? I was more in touch with the uh, coding process than manufacturing process because in the past I used to, to use 3D graphics and animation for, for my art but it's the first time that I'm using 3D for manufacturing process and working with a uh, generative shape I was able to do some quite complex and organic shape that is uh, able to be 3D printed, which is something in the past I just uh, generate complex shape, but just for, for uh, art, I never try to, to 3D print. It's a beautiful shape. How did you come up with it? Um, actually, I was inspired by um, uh, something quite poetic in the work of neuroscientists, because when they scan the brain, they amplify the electricity in your brain to to study your emotional state. Uh, this design, um, even if it looks a bit like aquatic, we don't really know, yeah. but it's, um, the first idea was more from electric fields that uh, are amplified uh, around uh, the head. And what do you, how do you see this being used in real life? My first idea was to, to make it for a, an artistic uh, wearable, mm -hmm. uh, wearable computer. A second application of this uh, mask would be for a uh, therapeutic purpose, for autistic uh, child, for example. It's very beautiful. Um, could you, are you working on anything else? What's next? So my next project uh, will be still with uh, art and science, uh, mixing neuroscience and visual arts. So I. I'm working on um, generating 3D visual from the dreams. Wow. So that you can uh, be able to see your dreams in uh, virtual reality. That'd be really cool. Um, yeah, so I've already started to, to work on this, actually scanning the brain of a sleeping participant during their dream. And uh, from their, their dream, I am able to, to know if the dream is happy or sad and which area of the brain is uh, activated, like is there movement in the dreams. The 3D Experience Lab uh, provides me a brain scanner that is a very quality of neuroscience lab, so now I can go further and study more the, the dreams. Thank you so much for sharing your work with us, Ninon. Uh, we look forward to seeing what you do next. My pleasure. There you have it, everyone. We just learned how the 3D Experience Lab works with startups and innovators to make a positive impact on the world. So thanks for watching and see you soon. Bye.